I'm Kim Benz from Wondering's Lavender Farm and I wanted to talk today about drying lavender for culinary purposes and for making tea. I'm going to take you through the process. The only part I'm not going to show is actually the cutting of the lavender and the fresh lavender because this is February and we have no fresh lavender. However, you can start. What you do is you do start by cutting the lavender and drying it. Now, what you'll see is we've cut the lavender and you can see that we've laid it in a way that it's not as tangled as you might want because and not as tangled as if you just threw the lavender in a bucket or something. You wanna lay it so that it's all together like this. Then you wanna bring it in and you, we, you can either put a rubber band on it and dry it up like this or you can open it up like this and dry it flat. If you do dry it flat, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to every day or so for about six days, you're gonna to wanna to flip it so that it doesn't um, get moldy on one side. And I highly recommend, not just with the lavender, but with any herbs you have, that you dry them inside in an air conditioned area. A lot of people will hang these in their barn, they'll hang these in their garage, but the garage and the barn get very hot during the summer and you will lose a lot of the essential oils. You will also um, get, you lose a lot of the color. So you really wanna bring these into an air conditioned area and dry them there. You do not wanna dry them in uh, high humidity either. You wanna dry them in something that's as dry as you can get um, again, so that they dry quickly and they dry in a cool area. So the, that's how this lavender has been dried. And if you can see, the color is really good. This lavender is about mm, eight to nine months old. And you can see it has almost exactly the same color as when we first dried it. Okay, so you have the lavender, it's dried. You can see the buds are actually starting to fall apart. So what do you do now? So that you can get it from this state into this day, is what I will show you. You want to get it so that it is free of sticks and that it has been ground up um, so that it's not these buds but a little bit more uh, ground up version. And there's a lot of good reasons for that and I'll get into that in a moment. So how do you do that? Well, the first step is once it's dry, I'll move this over here. You're gonna take the bunch of lavender and all you're gonna do is you can just see, I don't have to work very hard. I literally just have to crunch it with my hands a little bit and all the buds will start to come off. Now some of the sticks fall off too, but I'll show you how to deal with that. So you're left with these sticks. Now some people actually keep these sticks and they, uh, the stems, the dried stems, and they'll use them for uh, smudge pots. They'll use them, sometimes they'll keep them and they'll throw them in their fire because they get a little bit of lavender. There's not much lavender oil in these stems. There really isn't. Almost all of the lavender oil is in the buds that we have, not in the stems, but some people still use these. Okay, so you end it up with these stems, which I'll show you in a moment. And I try to pick up the obviously big pieces of sticks and get them out of the way. You can see it is messy, so you wanna do this wherever you don't mind a little messiness. Now what you do, and this is a rather big, these are sifting pans and you can get them on Amazon. And you really want two types, one that has a little bit bigger uh, holes that the buds can go through, and ones that are very fine. Now, I'm going to, actually, I think I probably grabbed this that it's not gonna go through very easily, but we'll see. Ah, oh, here it is. You can see the buds going through. I should have grabbed one of my pans that had a little bit bigger, but for the purposes of this, this will work. You can see the buds go through. And the stems, 
stay on top like this. Now, there we go. So, now I'm left with here, and I'll do one more step. Again, I'll try to pull out some of these little, these won't hurt you, these little stems here, they won't hurt you, it's just, okay, so now I put them in here. Now what this is, it's a very fine thing, and what this is supposed to do is take out, if there's little pieces of dust or dirt that are in there, very fine, usually what you have is pieces of the stem that have rubbed and there's just a very fine dust that comes off them and then you go like this okay and that just cleans up the lavender a little bit you can see the little bit of dust that's there just cleans it up doesn't really matter for tea when you're making tea but it does matter a little bit more for when you're cooking and baking so it's a little bit better not to have that in when you're actually baking like that. It won't hurt you, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just something you really don't want for baking. Then what I do, and I do this because if you open the butt up, what's gonna happen is the uh, essential oils are gonna be able to get out quicker and you're gonna have a better, uh, finer taste. So I put them in a food processor grind them up and it just is your preference how fine you want to grind this up you could grind them a little finer than what's here you can see this one's probably a little bit finer than what I ground right here so it just depends upon how fine you want that now you can make tea out of this and it's very simple. You can use one of these little tea bags that I get from Amazon. There's a number of different tea bags you can get. One of them are these little sacks that, uh, you know, drawstrings in them. And you want to put about two thirds of a teaspoon, rounded teaspoon, two thirds to a third. It depends upon how strong you like your tea. You don't need a lot. And there it is. You have your tea. You can also use some of these, which the hardest thing about these is getting them open. These are, do not use a drawstring. Here you go, get them open. And again, you wanna put about, you know, two thirds of a round teaspoon in there. And these, you use an iron just to seal the top. Again, all of these different kind, all of these different tea bags, empty tea bags, you can get on Amazon. They're very inexpensive, so you can make tea this way, or you can also put these this this um, lavender in either a glass jar or a tin jar. You don't want to use a, a plastic jar because the essential oils will leak into the plastic, and you'll lose some of the flavor. Um, the other thing that I always do with all of my dried herbs, whether it's lavender, it doesn't matter what it is, I always put a piece of paper towel in with them. That's because the uh, herbs tend to absorb water, and if, particularly if for some reason they're in a high humidity area, that water will get in, and the next thing you know, you'll have mold grown in it. But if in fact, so that's why you really wanna make sure that your herbs and your lavender are dry, and I, Basically, I dry them for 10 days in the house. Then you want to grind them up, put them into a container, glass or metal container, put a little paper towel in there. You can check the paper towel maybe in two or three weeks. If it's moist at all, you wanna pull it out and put another paper towel in. After you've done that, it's gonna be good for years. And particularly lavender, it just does not go bad. You just have to keep water out of it and you do not want to get light in it. If you get light in it, what's going to happen, it's going to turn uh, more of a brown color. You still will probably have most of the essential oil in there. It, there's nothing that happens to that essential oil. So um, that is turning lavender. 
fresh lavender into dried lavender into culinary lavender.